this particular day, believe it or not, I did run out of chicken. So I'm going to have your traditional bro breakfast that I used to eat back when I was bro dieting. 12 egg whites. 12 egg whites. 12. I don't discriminate. I like black and white. But, you know, actually what I'm going to do is 11 egg whites and a whole egg because I want some damn fat in this meal. I want a whole egg. I'm not sure. It's either going to be one whole egg or two whole eggs and 10 egg whites or 11 egg whites. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how this goes. You guys have never done egg whites before. The way to get an egg white out of an egg is just to flip the yolk back and forth into the shell and let the egg white come out into the pan. Let it separate. It's more convenient to actually get egg whites in a bottle, but also can be a lot more expensive. Muscle memory of the bro dieting, so I can do this pretty easily. All right, guys, gonna season it with some pepper. A little bit of salt. I'm gonna get to cooking real quick. So guys, my first big meal of the day is basically done. One protein pancake and one giant egg omelet thing. There you have it guys. I just finished my work for the day or most of my busy work for the day and here's my first big meal. That is about 12 eggs, 11 whites, one yolk. This is a little less than two scoops of protein not that much milk, uh, about 15-20 milliliters of milk, um, about two whole eggs, half a tablespoon of peanut butter mixed in with a mix, and then that's probably about a tablespoon and a half of peanut butter actually on the top with some syrup, and then there's some ketchup. So that's what that is. Uh, on protein, I would say this meal is probably about, I'm looking at like 80, 90 grams of protein if I had to guess. Yeah, I'm going to estimate about 85 grams of protein here. As far as carbs go, I'm going to go ahead and say with the syrup and the ketchup and the peanut butter, let's say about like 50, 60 carbs with this meal. And then for fats, fats are very, very high on this meal. I'm going to go ahead and say for fats about... 30, 30 grams of fat. I'm about to go enjoy this meal. I will see you guys in a bit. What's going on guys? I'm just sitting here outside the gym. I wanted to talk to you guys for just a moment here. There have been a lot of shootings lately, a lot. In my hometown, in Florida, now in France. It sucks that there are people with such low regard to human life that they'll just go and kill people. I think we're getting to a point in our society where having a permit to have a concealed weapon is becoming more important. Here in the next two or three months, I'm most likely going to go ahead and get my concealed carry. Um, I've got an assortment of guns, 357 Magnum, 45, 9mm, a couple of shotguns, AK-47. I might actually go out and get a smaller gun like a 380 or a small 9mm for a summer concealed carry. I've got an assortment of uh, pistols for winter um, for a winter concealed carry but I'm starting to get to the point where I feel like it's becoming a life insurance thing. It's a lot cheaper to have a concealed permit and a small pistol than, than to get shot and then for your family to pay for your funeral. This sucks. I really I don't really like talking about it, but I've been losing sleep over it for the past couple of days. It's been getting to me a little bit. So guys, I think now is the time, if you're 21 and older, to get a concealed weapons permit and to carry. Guns don't kill people. People do. 
the two officers that were killed in France were not killed by a gun. They were killed by knives. But with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and head into the gym. I will see you guys in there. What's up, guys? Back at it again with another commentary. It is Tuesday, June 14th. And today, I want to talk about progression schemes. And the exact thing I want to talk about is how to kind of balance out your power and your hypertrophy days. <clears throat> so the way that I like to program my progression and the way that I like to program most of my clients' progression is a lower body power day where you just do squat and deadlift, low reps, anywhere from three to seven reps, sometimes even down to doubles. I'm not big on singles, but you know, the low rep days, you're focusing on power and explosiveness and just getting more weight progressively over the weeks. So that first day is going to be a uh, lower body power. Second day is going to be an uh, upper body power. So the second day is going to have everything, back, chest, shoulders, arms. But the goal is to just stay in that low rep range, anywhere from three to seven reps. Then I like to have a either take a day off and go back and do a lower body hypertrophy day and then an upper body hypertrophy day or what you can do is say Monday is a lower body power, Tuesday is an upper body power, Wednesday off, then Thursday would be a legs hypertrophy, Friday could be your uh, chest and arms hypertrophy and Saturday could be your uh, back and shoulders hypertrophy or y you can create your hypertrophy days really however you want to, depending on what you're trying to focus on, depending on your weak points or the muscles that you're really trying to focus on and build. Uh, some people only have four days a week to work out, and for them, what works really, really well is a, a lower body power, upper body power off, legs hypertrophy, upper body hypertrophy off. <clears throat> that works well for people that are really, really busy. And the progression schemes that I like to use is something like a like a 765 for the power days. So for your power days on squat, bench, and deadlift. And then for the hypertrophy days, I like to use a progression scheme of 12, 10, and 8. And even sometimes... Um, with some women that are trying to really, really build the lower body mass, I'll give them a progression scheme of 16, 14, 12 on the lower body hypertrophy days. And, you know, even for some guys, I'll have that upper rep progression scheme for just really, really banging out the hypertrophy. A lot of sets, a lot of reps, a lot of volume. That's how you build muscle. The power days are for building the strength. And now, guys, strength and muscle go hand in hand. So the more strength you have, the more potential you have to build muscle. The more muscle you have, the more potential you have to fill out and build strength. So they do go hand in hand, but at the same time, if your strength days and your hypertrophy days are too close, say on your strength days, you're doing something like a seven six five and then on your hypertrophy days you're doing something like a nine eight seven then what might actually happen is your strength days could affect your hypertrophy days or vice versa maybe after you've already done your strength days or your power days and then when you actually get your hypertrophy days which should be a little bit higher in reps then you're a little defeated or vice versa after you've done your hypertrophy days, when it comes to do your power days again next week, you don't have any energy left. You're just, you're done for. It's pretty much a fact that someone on a really good power hypertrophy progression scheme and on a really good scheduled split is going to do much, much better than someone who's just going in the gym, just throwing up weights, just maxing out all the time, just doing a bunch of sets, reps, and weights and hitting every machine in the gym. That's why I coach people, guys. That's why it's important to learn about it, whether you hire a coach, whether you learn about it on your own. It's really important to learn these things, guys. And with that, I'm going to conclude the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. 
all love guys next video is going to start out immediately after the gym when i took a trip to walmart and got some food that is going to help me with my diet i'll see you next time guys